Ladies and gentlemen, how to nail the first 30 seconds of any conversation for sure. If you want to find out, stay tuned. What's up, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, it's BC, and I'm back here again. I know that you've been enjoying my content over the years in regards to making phone calls, going door to door, connecting with people, and understanding communication a little bit better. And I've done some videos that have had a relatively, we can say, good reception as far as talking to strangers, what not to say, five things you should never say. I think that video has like almost 100,000 views. So obviously this is a topic that a lot of people resonate with, and I wanted to zoom in on the beginning portion of a conversation. Now you can apply this kind of to a cold call, I guess you can say, but this is more, I meet somebody on the street, I meet somebody at a party, at a networking event. I'm just gonna give you some basic, you know, four or five things to keep in mind when it comes to entering a conversation and how to make sure that you raise the likelihood of that conversation opening and being successful, we can say, because when we want to enter a conversation with somebody, uh, whether it's man and a woman, man and man, woman and woman, whatever it is, uh, the last thing we want is for it to be awkward, right? So the first lesson is this, okay? And pay very close attention because a lot of this stuff is basic, but we forget about it in the moment when we get caught up in it and our emotions start firing, right? The first thing is to be absolutely certain that the words that you're saying and how you're approaching the person and everything about you and your gait, your gait meaning you, right? How you walk and you, that all of it, any signal people would look at, right? People are gonna look at your posture, your eyes, right? The tension or lack thereof of the muscles in your face, right? Are you squared up with them or not, right? If I square up with a man with body language, it's gonna be almost threatening. So I kind of want to come in a little bit turned or at an angle. You want to make sure all those signals give off non-threatening, okay? So if you're a big dude like me, I'm six foot two, six foot three, somewhere in the middle, right? This smile, not a fake smile, but a smile, right? That makes you seem more pleasant. You want open body language. I don't want my hands in my pockets. I want hands out or visible. And I don't want to be slouched over or, you know, giving people my back. I want to come in at an angle, of course, because I don't want to come straight on. Whether you're a man or a woman doesn't matter. Your voice has to be pleasant. You can't come in like this. It's too loud. But you also can't come in like this. It's too soft and weak. You want to come in like this. Oh, hey, right? And Again, it doesn't matter what you say. We'll get to that here in a second, but be sure everything about you, your energy, your smile, your eyes, your body language, your gestures, signal, I'm not a threat. That's the number one reason people mess up the first couple of seconds of a conversation is they come in giving off the wrong signals. Then when they start communicating and the other person isn't responding or the group isn't responding, there's this like, oh my God, what's going on? They feel awkward, then you start feeling awkward and you're like, oh my God, I did something wrong and it's done, okay? Number two tied to this is you have to understand the average person is super awkward, super awkward. So when you approach, keep in mind, even if I do everything right, they still may respond and from their standpoint, because they're insecure or they're not comfortable, they're gonna give off the impression that I did something wrong. However, that's not necessarily the case. So. If I can sum that up to give you something to remember when you enter a conversation is I'm not going to be thrown off by their initial response because I know in the back of my mind, odds are they're probably going to be a little thrown off or awkward. It's not normal to talk to strangers and strike up random conversations. Forget about being good at it. Let's forget about that for a second. I'm talking about being on the street and actually starting conversations, not just, oh, hey, how you doing? I mean, actually getting in a conversation. So that's going to keep you a lot more grounded and with more calm and poise. Because when you get that first response, even if they're kind of thrown off, you're not gonna to react to it. You're gonna know and smile and be like, okay, they're giving me that response that Brian was telling me, okay? Now I've done this thousands and thousands of times, so I understand this, okay? Number three, when you enter the conversation, I'm gonna tell you what to avoid and what to do. You want to bring up neutral questions or elements of conversation, neutral, okay? Um, if I'm in a, a place where everybody seems to be wearing white, hey guys, question, why is everybody wearing white? I didn't get the memo. 
Oh, it's blah, blah, blah. And they'll tell me, I'm in. That's neutral. It's not, oh, hey, I like your shoes. Oh, your eyes are so pretty. Oh, look at your breasts. They're incredible. You have a big ass. Oh, you're tall. Oh, you're handsome. You're this and that. Look, even if you genuinely mean that, in most cases, people, because they're so used to getting the fake compliment, especially women, that's not going to be readily accepted, especially if you're entering a group. Because when you enter the group and you just address one person and you ignore everybody else, you're in violation socially of the environment and of that group. And you have to remember that. So again, I'm going to ask neutral questions. I'm going to stay away from fake compliments and all that kind of stuff. Okay. All it's going to do is when you give a fake compliment, let's say somebody doesn't want to accept it. A lot of people socially, because they want to try to be polite, they're not going to necessarily not going to necessarily tell you, Hey, go fuck yourself or that's lame. They're going to want to pull out of the conversation, but kind of not know how to do it. And it's just going to be this awkward thing. We've seen it. You might have been involved with it. I know I fucked up a lot in my younger days approaching people because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And it's just awkward, right? And then both parties walk away kind of disgusted and their energy levels go down. Okay. Um, the next thing I'm going to give you is check your energy because most people, their energy is way too low. You come in boring. You need to enter a group or meet a person at their energy level or vibe, that's a better word, vibe, or slightly above. So if, so if a group is having a dynamic conversation, oh yeah, man, and you come in like this, oh hey guys, you're out. Like you have no shot because you're bringing them down, okay? Or the opposite, if they're all talking like this, oh hey, and you come in like this, hey, what's up? Too loud, right? Same thing applies when you call people, when you go door to door, you have to meet people at their level or slightly above. Now, there's a term that I got from somebody, I forget what it was, that has to be present in any of these elements, no matter where you're at in the, the vibe or energy scale. And it was called bottled enthusiasm. I forget who told me. Mad credit to whoever said that. I heard it like once years ago. And I was like, you know what? Um, that's a great uh, phrase to sum this up. Bottled enthusiasm. Here's an example. Let's say I'm talking to the sweet, sweet old lady, right? Who um, doesn't have a lot of energy and she's amiable personality type we can say and um you know she kind of talks like this and, and she's very soft spoken right so what i mean by, i'm gonna give you an example of bottled enthusiasm hey uh marjorie that's her name is or hey marjorie it's brian look i'm 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 so excited to talk to you or hey you know what i saw you over here sitting uh, and, and that ice cream looks phenomenal from over there where did you get it did you get it here in the mall it looks really good i want to get one and i'm kind of looking away to calibrate right so i'm not in her face that's enthusiasm right the wrong way of doing it would be like this. Let's say her name is Marjorie. Oh, hey, Marjorie. Hi, nice to meet you. My name is Brian, and um, I wanted to ask you a question. That's the wrong way to do it, okay? Bottle enthusiasm is you're still enthusiastic, but you're kind of keeping it maintained. Now, the same thing you can do at a higher level like this. I'm not like, oh, hey, guys. It's like, oh, man, I'm so excited. This is, this is amazing. Look, I wanted to come over and tell you guys about this brand new opportunity. Hey, can you guys keep a secret? Like that, that I'm just messing around here, right? But that's kind of like bottled enthusiasm is like a good way to tie this enter at their vibe or slightly higher because it brings a different element. What you're doing is you're entering and people subconsciously are going to say, well, this person seems okay, non-threat. I'll accept their communication for now. Then when you bring that bottled enthusiasm, that sprinkle of enthusiasm, now what people don't realize on an energetic level is smiling enthusiasm that signifies winning in life to people therefore that energy is attractive it's like a magnet that pulls people in what do we do when we hear people laugh we look there's a celebration clap clapping what do we do we look we're wired to respond to that ladies and gentlemen so when you have that in you it's almost like you're now making this an art form and a science. It's like, hey, I know people respond to this, this energy. Let me bring it in, even if I have to kind of conjure it up. Because you can. You don't need caffeine. You don't need alcohol. Conjure up this energy by yourself. You can. Think about the last time, if you're having trouble, the last time you felt incredible. Now, think about that for a second. See it and start, you know, taking in all the sounds and pictures and colors from that moment and start to feel it inside your body. It's going to start wherever it's going to start. For some people, it's the chest, the arm, the legs, a little tingly feeling, whatever it is. You start smiling. Now it's manifesting. Okay, now you go. And if you have to do that quick exercise before you go in, boom, like even me, I kind of brighten up. I'm like, well, hey, it's going to increase my vibe too. It's a quick little mental technique that you can use to go in. But these are just some of the introductory things you can do. And I'll probably do a follow-up video to this to start giving you some sound bites to say and some words. Okay? 
If you haven't studied, um, for those of you who made it to the end, social dynamics, I recommend you get into it. Now, um, a lot of the study of that, the science comes from pickup. And I know pickup and pickup artists and all that bullshit, as far as society's label, they've labeled it as something bad, but you need to see beyond those stupid ass labels they give and understand it for the science that it is, which is just basic knowledge of social situations, again, social dynamics, and understanding attraction between men and men, men and women, women and men, and what we're wired to respond to and not to. There's nothing wrong with that, but the more understanding you have in it, the more power you're gonna have in influencing people. Why, do you, why the fuck do you think I've been able to grow my channel and all my social media influence uh, you know, spectrum with Instagram and Facebook and all that shit, when look, look at my video quality, it's trash. I don't edit, I don't do shit but I have a certain level of understanding of subjects so people are willing to bypass that crap and listen to me. It's an art form, speaking and communicating. So is this stuff that I'm telling you. Practice it and learn it. Especially if you're watching my channel and you're under age 30, you have no idea how rampant lack of social skills and communication skills is out there. You have no idea. I experience it on a daily basis and I'm telling you, for the thousands of people who will watch this video, listen to this, watch it again, take some notes, and buckle up for the series because it's going to be incredible, okay? With that said, I'll end it here. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, be sure to hit that button. Hit the notification bell icon. There's only like 1% of my views are coming from the notification bell icon, which I think is ridiculous. Um, I know some people have clicked it. They're not getting the emails, but hey, unclick it and click it again as a favor. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment below. If you want part two, leave a comment below. If you want me to attack any particular part of this video, and go deeper on it on YouTube, let me know in the comment section below as well. Two quick announcements. Number one, Supreme Being, my podcast. Subscribe below. It's on every major podcast uh, platform. Podcast platform. Sorry, it's kind of a tongue twister. And lastly, Modern Success. If what I just described in this video lit the light bulb, I go one million levels deeper among this and many other subjects in Modern Success. It will change your life. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Shout out to all the new members this month. I think we've already had... 15 sign up so far this month and we're on the eighth or ninth day. So almost two a day. Pretty excited. The program is growing super, super fast. That's also in the description below at briancasella.com. If you need anything from me or my team real estate wise, go to briancasella.com. Other than that, thank you for watching. Peace out, Team BC. On to the next one.